Hello, and welcome to the stream. Hope you are all having a wonderful day so far. It is the evening here. I am finished with contract work stuff for the day. And my reward is to sit down with a nice mug of hot chocolate and do some work in Blender. So, how is everyone? Uh, this should hopefully be quite a fun stream because we are going to be working on another room. This room is all kitted out. I mean, it's most of it's not functional, but at least it looks okay and looks are the most important thing. Uh, so yeah, we want to make things look a bit better in the other room, which is going to be a bit of work because I have been having ideas I've been having grand ideas. Um, the ship may be being remodeled. Who knows? We will see. But yeah, uh, what I'm wanting to do is basically, rather than have it be necessarily a conference room, the room is going to be something more of a an observatory. A, a workspace, a workshop, uh, just a, a, a general room with lots of stuff and it just happens that one of the things it has is a giant screen that we can do work on. I want, I want to do more. So, let me show you what I have in store. At least uh, what I have planned. So, if we head over here and into our room here, You'll notice that this is all very sparse at the moment and it's just a screen taking up the whole wall. We don't even have a, a roof on here. So what are we going to be changing? Well, if we zoom in, I can give you an idea. So what I'm looking at is something like this. And if I bring back... Oops, wrong. If I bring everything back, you can get a sense of what I'm going to be going for. So let's get rid of that, and I can actually delete that. So this is a, a rough me just blocking things out of what I want to accomplish. And essentially what it is, is the height of this room is going to be bigger. I've decided the the wings of the ship, because the ship itself is almost like a, a manta ray uh, sort of shape. The wings are going to be like half levels down, because there's always going to be a, a top deck and a bottom deck. But I've decided I'm going to have the outer level, like the wing rooms, be sort of half down. Uh, now, in order to do that, I need to have a walkway. So this is going to require doing things such as levels. By being half levels down, it means that I can also do a step down to a door here that can take us downstairs. So we'll be able to get upstairs and downstairs from this room where we're going to be spending most of our time. But yes, uh, this is just a very simple blocked out uh, diagram. But what we want to do, if I can uh, bring up, is the basic outline of the ship is... Oh, now, I'm going to have to restart my iPad. Where's it else to? Running right here, welcome in. Yes, I'm hoping it will be a, a fairly cool idea. I've been sort of inspired by Space Pirate Fenrir 
to some degree how they have their screen. Uh, I have been looking into ways to potentially have a screen that works sort of similar to his and to people like Willem and Kieran who also do capture. Unfortunately, it's a little bit more complex on the Mac. I mean, it may not be. I just have to find the right tools to do it. There are tools that make it possible. They just kind of crash Unity immediately. But yes, how are you doing, uh, Ene? Right, let's see if my iPad is still booting up. Hopefully, it will uh, boot up and then I'll be able to do it. But yeah, uh, looking at tools to actually capture my screen and gather it as a texture. And there is a tool called Siphon, which is effectively the Mac version of what most of these other animator streamers are using for capturing their screens and so on. Now the problem with Siphon is it doesn't really capture a screen, it captures windows and also the aforementioned crashing issue. Now Apple have APIs that allow you to capture screens. So I could potentially use those. The problem is using them from Unity is a bit of a pain. So I've been looking into how can you create a Unity plugin so that you can pass a texture in to some native code so the native code can change that texture and then Unity can then use that to display something. And I may look at going down that route, uh, but for now that's probably more a far into the future thing because that is going to require a lot of stuff that I haven't ever touched before uh, coming together perfectly. But hopefully, I can make it work if nothing else appears. So, now the iPad has uh, started up. I can go back into Procreate. And ship. Here we go. So now if I share my screen, it appears. So this is the basic layout that I'm looking at. We've got the bridge that we have at the moment. And to the side, we just have a rectangle at the moment that is uh, the room we're in now, this conference room. What I'm wanting to go for is some sort of a curved shape. So it'd be a flat wall at the back but then it will curve round and what I'm basically wanting is you'd have a walkway but there'd be large windows all around the curve now some of the curves on here I probably need to tighten up because what I probably want to do is have like this that that drawing okay so this area here, I don't want to have actually be that. I want it to sort of be flat here and then sort of curve, maybe more like that. So this is more of a just a very rough thing. Uh, and then these outer surfaces here will probably go away. It will probably actually curve more like that. But that is what I'm going for. So you would have these curves now. Previously, I worked from what I want the outer shape to be, and then I worked it. Now I'm working from the, with a rough idea of what I want the outer shape to be, but I'm working from the inside out, and then I will wrap something around it that makes sense. And the reason for that is that I need to build these rooms to be functional. They need to be functional for uh, actually streaming from, for me to be able to move around the ship, to actually have stuff that is worth doing in them uh so that is what i'm going to do here i'm going to build this 
be something that is functional that I can use for many different uh, purposes. So, if I had the iPad, I've just been blocking this out, so what we're probably going to do is just get this inner wall. Um, Yeah, get the inner wall and the floor sorted out. As once they are sorted, then we can work out what we want, how we want our outer shape to actually look. Uh, right, so let's see. Uh, you're good. Finish up work, so I might be in and out. Well, just feel free to drop in. If you've got any questions at any point, just. Uh, let me know but hopefully this is mostly self-explanatory and just a, a nice relaxing stream where we can chat and explore blender together okay so i am going to uh Delete all of that. I think what I'm going to do temporarily is. Oh, can I? There we go. I'm going to link the bridge. Um, I think we want. Okay, so we have that. So what I want to do is leave that up there. And I want to select all of these and just rotate them. Uh, Do 180. Oh yeah, that won't work, will it? Um, it's remembering. There it is. It's controlling Blender. It's what remembering which hotkeys go where, depending on which uh, app I'm in. So now I'm going to take this and along the x-axis. to be different shapes. Hmm, curious. I wonder why we've ended up with them being slightly different shapes. Oh well, we can fix that easily enough. And it's hard to work out exactly things are. So I want to select this. Um, that does, and we're just going to move them up. Out there. 
that. And I hope for me, yeah, so that is. Uh, if I that along the Y, we should hopefully be able to get ourselves lined up a bit more. Okay. They seem to be positioned correctly, so it's just the we just want to move down slightly to there. From where I am. Aha, so the height has changed. That would explain it. Get rid of those. Of these vertices. It's not twig. It is going okay. How are things going with you? level. So now we know where our floor level is going to be. So our floor level's there. That our floor level should be at zero. Where's OBS going? No. Um, is the stream Has the stream gone down? peculiar um yeah no idea what happened there uh literally just had my bitrate drop to zero not saying i dropped any frames or anything it just bitrate cut out um not had that before Well, hopefully it stabilizes. We will uh, see what happens. Might just mean I'm going to need to stitch some videos together.
Well, was that the book I saw? Hmm. I think I, I I think this room may be a little buggy. Do you want to know what the solution is? Ow. More bugs. Yes, more bugs is the solution. Um, no, the solution is to have a bigger room. And therefore, if there's a bigger room, that means fewer bugs can fit in it. Right? That's how maths works. So therefore, that will solve all the bug problems because people won't use a bigger room to uh, use it as an excuse to throw even more bugs because more bugs will fit in it. Will they? No, they won't. So, let's have a look at this. Let's line this up so that the floor here is going to be at zero. And then what we'll do is we'll take this and shift it down. Shift it to there. Hey, Kieran, how are you doing? I seem to be having similar problems to you today. In that my stream is having problems staying up. Right, so now we can select this. Shift down. At that old Simpsons bit where the doctor is trying to explain to Mr. Burns that the only reason he's alive because he of every single disease is trying to kill him at once. Yep. And like Mr. Burns, that means I'm invincible. Uh, Alright, so the height here it needs to be two meters. Make it 2.2. Because .2. the height is going to sort of curve over and curve down. Yeah, I have been, I, I've had one dropout, but I have no idea what happened then. There was, like, I've had no dropped frames or anything. It's just the bit rate just went to zero suddenly and then came back. So. Not going to complain about that. As long as, it, as long as it's working now, that's all that matters. So, yes. Um, now that we have that. That hat is 2.15. Set that to minus 2.2. Okay, see you later, Renee. I'll be on for another, well, at least 90 minutes, possibly even longer. Depends how uh, into this I get. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks for popping in and uh, hope to see you again. Right, I'm just considering the logistics of this wall here. Because we're going to drop down to having a door here. Which 
go into another room. But there'll be a floor there. So How low do we want to go? I think. Oh, let's just add that. I think we can. Just, I think that that we don't need. Uh. this as well Oops, like that so we'll go in here uh, need to fix the topology of that but let's just get the position right let's bring it back did more on the freelance project today Fantastic. Hopefully that's going well for you. Alright. So, don't want to do that. So I'll select that and let's bring this down. Probably to about there. And now let's bring it up a bit and let's just bring the entire floor down just a smidge. How's the ship maintenance? Uh, it's going fairly well. So this is what I'm doing in the conference room. So if I bring this back, so rather than making it a conference room, what I'm basically doing is you're going to have your bridge here. Down below there's going to be Basically, a cargo hold at the front, engineering at the back, which means that this room back here, I don't know what it's going to be. Then here is going to be crew quarters and a lift that goes down to the cargo hold. But this means that this is sort of a conference room. So the two wings of the ship are going to be sort of almost double height so the floors are going to be almost like halfway between so you get a little step down and then another step down uh so i do probably want to bring that floor up and then bring the base that down so yeah rather than the conference room this is going to be more of a I mean, an observatory is what I'm thinking because I want like nice big windows around so that you can see it out. Uh, and what is going on in front when the screen isn't there? All right, let's fix this topology here. Those are some weird bits and pieces. Uh, it's usually easy to do this. Smell. Um, that's what is that? Don't get rid of this. this. down uh, 
Okay. So, I want to do... Is on those I want uh, let's divide. Oh. Oh. Down to the cocoa like Mass Effect. I've not actually played Mass Effect. But let's just say yes. For the sake of argument. Alright. Why does it keep selecting? down there. That's that. That and that and that. That. Oh, if it's going on here. What would help is if I um Is it that you set the background? Ooh, butter chicken curry. I actually had a uh, butter chicken curry for tea myself. No, mine was a, a pre bought one that I just. Boiled the rice, cooked the naan, and threw the curry in the microwave. <laughs> because I don't cook that much, so. And the properties, not output. What it was, world properties. Oh, viewport display, that's what I'm wanting. Where is it? Oh, it wasn't just any nan, it was garlic nan. that you could change the background color using one of these. Where on earth is it? I've done it before and I cannot remember where on earth it's got to. I don't know if anyone in chat knows where the background color is um not ambient occlusion um, that's just all rendering stuff I thought it was in the world properties
Yeah, so you can change it in that. Okay, so that changed it in there, but is it? Yeah, for the viewport here, and is it just in? Just a global setting. Viewport. Or is it in themes? Um, I right, have 3D viewport. I think it would be under 3D viewport, wouldn't you? It doesn't seem to be. Oh well, doesn't matter that much. Um, it's just times like that where that looks almost translucent when it isn't. So that is good. Uh, I don't technically need the underneath, do we? We could just have a plane um i think i actually made them like this for a reason and i can't remember what that reason is oh why did i do that That looks better. Not perfect, but good enough. Okay, so I that I them. What I need to do is 
copy that. And uh, no, not extrude vert. Yeah, not extrude vertices. Um, no, we have a new edge. No, it wasn't that. Um, oh, do I need to? Thinking not in Blender. All right, so what we want to do here is select that and just. Only face it. Then we want to. Oh, we were in there. Alright, we want to select that. And. Move it into position. Two, seven, five, seven, How people's week's going? My week is going uh, not too badly. I managed to be fairly productive yesterday, which is always a good thing. Now, I did end up with a bit of a headache towards the end of the day, which was not quite so nice. same okay fantastic so let's hide this and get some faces onto here do that I feel like I need to sneeze. There we go, sneezed. <laughs> right. Um Let's add that so I can just focus on this. Subdivide that. Zero. 
now, so that needs to be at zero. I can go there. We could probably get rid of that edge. And that edge. And they can dissolve. I mean, what we want to do is that, 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 and all of those, and F. Then we'll. No, that hasn't worked. because it's not going round it. Um, okay. Let's put that, that, that. going to have to um, subdivide this and this Why must you be so annoying? All I want to do is take this Y and copy it and then paste it onto those. But you won't let me do that. Like, you'll let me do that. Oh, now you're going to let me. Oh, yeah, because if they're all the same, then it will move. Okay, fair enough. And then uh, we'll probably do a triangle there, triangle there. Yeah, we're going to want to subdivide these. Um, Seven two one three eight. How did you get fifty from that? Yep, things have a habit of working when you tell them off. That. <laughs> the door is cat ears. Actually, they look a bit more like... Oh, God, I've just realised what that looks like. Observe what I have selected here and observe what I have just realized it looks like. It's 
See the resemblance? Hidden, hidden in the polygons of my ship. Our characters from Bluey. Which if you've never seen Bluey, is quite possibly the best and funniest young kids program you will ever see. Right, let's just to make life simple, let's do the same thing here. Let's add another character from Bluey. Um subdivide. Uh what do we and there's final seven five four. Oh, that's not working. Okay, let's just ignore that. Let's just, um, come on, got the right thing. Subdivide. Actually, I didn't even need to do that because I can just copy paste. Oh, fuck. Copy. Paste. There we go. Right. F, F. F. edges to select there we go and if we bring everything back You haven't been on the walk once this week, Ken. I managed to get on two walks. I didn't manage to get on one today, mostly because it was raining. There was one moment when I could potentially have gone for a walk, uh, but it was right around uh, when the schools would be letting out, and there are a few schools around, so it's like walking around when there's a bunch of people walking around the same area with it's just busy so it's having to walk around people but the other good reason that i didn't is that if i did towards the end of said walk uh i would have got absolutely soaked because it absolutely chucked it down <laughs> about 20 minutes after i uh thought hmm, i could go for a walk Okay. So I think we're in a fairly good place there. So this I'm going to hide. And what we need to do is work out the outer curve. So we're going to curve around here. we want to be straightened up by here we can curve round and then straight up so if we set the front of this to around here 
I mean, we could come further around. Actually, so yeah, let's do along this line here then. So, first thing I want to do is select that, and that is going to be uh, not Z, we want Y, uh, minus or five. Oh, it's going to be minus five. You where? Oh, it's relative. Uh, so global, it wants to be at three. Oh, that's fair point. Um, that's all these and that and oh, uh, apply rotation scale. Okay, so we want line to go down. It's going to come down and then curve. Mm, it'd probably be better if it did come forward a bit more. Let's shift it forward to uh, 3.5. Yeah, so curve goes round, comes down, and then by this point here, is going straight. I want to go straight and then curve around. And then sort of loop back here. I think what I want to do is hide all of this and lay out the mid shape. So that is going to be the shape that basically follows this bit around and is going to come around. And then I can work out what the if once I get that then I can just sort of cop like extrude it up and scale it in, extrude it up and scale it in and so on. I can get rid of. Uh, let's create a plane. Be roughly about there. my stream deck somewhere where I can actually get to it. That is point there. Uh, 
Let's shift some stuff. Um, all right, so that's going to be set to minus nine. As this is going to be the internal wall, because the external wall is going to curve around and curve to there. So for the internal wall, we can actually uh, shift this along to um, four. So this one, we are going to want to um, now let's say minus two. That probably wants to be there. Um, Probably want one there. Curve around to be pretty much a straight line to there. Then it's going to curve into a tail back there. So let's just subdivide this into two. So let's let that divide two cuts. There we go. Well, this wants to be zero minus, um, what would it be? Minus 5.5. Something like that. So that's going to be what? Minus five, minus two. And this one we can subdivide. Um, where we do what? Two point two five. Something like that. And that could probably go to minus two point five. Um probably four point five. That could probably shift. Uh, now we can't shift it that much more, can we? Hmm. Uh, I'm just going to quickly nip to the loo and when we get back I'm going to have another think about exactly what we want to do here. So I will see you all in a minutes i'll run a ad during the break just so that anyone coming in doesn't have to deal with three rolls so feel free to go get yourself a drink or uh get some fresh air do some stretches and just 
ignore the ad. So, I will see you all in a few minutes. Okay, I am back. So I had some rather good news earlier today. Uh, I got a new form contract. They, uh, my carrier formed me up and said essentially Okay, you've paid off your phone now. We can get you on something cheaper. Turns out cheaper is means something that is thirteen pounds a month cheaper. Going from five gigs of data a month to thirty gigs of data a month. So I'm paying like almost half what I was and getting six times the data. Which is pretty good going. I am with uh, R2. That's, I think, these need to be flattened off a bit. But yeah, that was quite good because that is saving me what? Earth. 100 and. About 150 quid over the course of a year. And having five times. Uh, no, six times the data. Even though I don't really use even the five gigs, it's useful to have for those few times where I would previously have needed to um, 
when I would have had to get a bolt on to use a bit more data. Probably want to point there. To there, I want a midpoint there. To there, I want a midpoint there. To there. Think what would happen probably needs to be more like that. We set that to point five. I've also been playing around with my Space Dwarf colour scheme. And I think I've mentioned before with my Space Dwarfs that I am going for sort of... It's a Lego Ice Planet inspired thing. I like the colours that we use. So it's sort of a blue and orange with white and black. And I've been trying to work out exactly how I want to paint them. And I ended up uh, coming up with a decent colour scheme. Uh, if I could show you. Let's bring this up. So this is the sort of colour scheme that I'm going to be going with. If we look down here, it's primarily black overalls, white armour, and then blue helmets. The vehicles are primarily going to be white, black underneath, white armor with blue armor on top. And then over here, white with blue and then black armor for the legs and orange for stuff. But what was fun was actually just taking, because this is the first time I've actually bothered doing this. Because for most of my other armies, the tower was a colour scheme I came up with like 10 years ago. And most of the others were just standard colour schemes. Thousand Suns are standard. Marines are standard. So this is all going... Uh, this is my first custom colour scheme in a while. But, so this is the first time I've actually done this where I've taken some photos and painted over them because this is this is where I learned the fun like I've already I've always known how you'd use like overlay and light and dark and even like the hue but the color option like the transformation you can get this is just a mixture of some overlay layers light and layers dark and layers well, I've been using some like the uh, linear burn layers and linear highlights, but also the color layers. Just to paint over. Because like the blue, as you can see, it's just the color that's changing. The actual uh, like brightness is not changing, but like I've got some very dark stuff here that I'm lighting it up and then darkening down stuff over here. So I can go here as well and turn it on and off. That's just fun for experimenting with it, uh, getting the models they have and just painting over with what I want. 
So I've started painting those, so we'll see how uh, we go. So let's... That is going to need another subdivide. something a bit more like that see what i could do is curve it round like that and then start straightening it off but that's probably a bit too much i think that is about as much curve as i want to have in it uh Probably subdivide these a bit more. But what I could do is if I subdivide that, uh, why are we there? Uh, minus 5.25, set that to minus 5.25. And cheat a bit there. But what I probably should be doing is um this. Uh it's 32 vertices what are we going to get out of well, that's going to be what eight uh, it looks curved enough we could go to 40 but if we did 40 how many vertices do we get here Um, yeah, ten should be fine. How big is the dwarf armor going to be? I actually have a 2,000 point armor. So this is a, a fun thing. The rule book came out not this past weekend, but the weekend before as part of a, like a box set, an introductory box set. So this is a brand new army. And last Thursday or Friday, they released an FAQ for it completely changing how one of the rules works and basically upping the price like the points cost of everything by about i mean like the troops went at one point which is 
always a big thing for troops but some things went up like 70 points because they'd completely miscosted <laughs> all the point values so i had a two thousand point army that basically had something like one of every unit in the army in but i've had to drop a few so uh where is my list because they still haven't actually updated their app to the new point values all right let's see if i can find you pictures of the stuff because so i have this here so these two are hq choices so they're two of my hqs this is two squads of 10 troops and then you got three bags so what i'm adding to this kit i'm going to get another squad of 10 troops then i'm going to get uh let's see a squad of 10 of these so this is just five but i'm going to get a squad of 10 of these uh and then let's see if uh, i can find uh they're not showing half a basically a unit of people like this character and then i'm going to get uh, two moon buggies so two of those and then one of the uh the big things that i showed you So it should be a, a fairly good mix of uh it's, there's also an hq but i don't think there's images of that online but yeah so it's going to be a good mix it's going to be about I mean, how many models will that be 30 45 50 54 models which for a 2000 point army is not too bad and i'm only really missing two units one hq choice and one heavy support choice so i may still pick those up just so that i have them to paint them up and it gives me the option to play around a bit all right let's um get this and scale it up i want to do it from there i want um Unfortunately, they're not available on the web store, Kieran. They've, uh, the intro box has sold out. So it's a case of waiting until uh, they release the whatever stuff they're going to bring out next. So I mean, it's all going to come out again. It's just a case of when it'll probably be over the next few months that the starting soon kit will like uh, the starter box will come out for them the uh what they called um 
I can't remember what the name of them are. But they're the ones that are really good value box sets, so... Uh, but yeah, hopefully over the next month or so we'll start seeing them appear. But yeah, I can't remember how much I paid for the box. I think it was like a hundred and something pounds. Which considering you're getting two characters, two troops choices and a fast attack is quite a lot it, it was a good value for money you basically got i think effectively some models and the codex free uh it included the codex included the cards it included a few other bits and pieces so it was a pretty good value box set but yeah what how much is it gonna cost me to push yourself i need to Units, I need an HQ choice. Two units, three units of elites, and three vehicles. Uh, oof. <laughs> Probably talking like £250, if not more, to <laughs> finish it off. Hopefully, it's going to take a while to do it. Um, probably going to take me a, a month or two to finish off the uh, models that I already have. Right. So, I'm going to join those. And then I'm going to delete these. Uh, no, it's not my main army. So my main... Fat. Let me just hide this. Because I'm going to show you... Show you my problem. Show you the problem I have... Uh, digitized. This here is my problem. I have lots of stuff. So I have regular dwarf army from when I played fantasy. And I've sorted this out in terms of what I have, what is built, what I have base painted, what is fully painted, based, varnished, and various other factors on there. So the dwarves, fairly good. My Sky Dwarfs, Caradon Overlords, almost done. I've only got the three big ships. Well, two of the three big ships to finish off. And then they are pretty much done. But that is about a 2,000 point Sigma army, if not more. Probably more in terms of what I have. Boostback Gates is just stuff that I got in the box set. I may make an army with them, but that's sort of like a hold army. Wanderers, again. This is stuff that I got quite a while ago. A lot of bits and pieces. Like the Wanderers and the Dwarves can go together to be like a City of Sigma thing. But primarily Sylvaneth, where I've just got a Wildwood to paint up and, oh no, a Wildwood and I also have, um, Lariel, I believe it is, which is a very big thing. But that is almost done and that again is probably about 3,000 points of Sylvaneth. I have Black Sun Fortress, which is completely unpainted. I have 30k in Peel Fist, so... I have about 3,000 points of Imperial Fists. You can see there's a lot of red because not much of it is painted. And this is a Heresy Era Imperial Fists.
yeah, I've got the the main Blackstone Fortress box, and then I've got a bunch of other kits from it. So I've got the Amble, I've got the there's an expansion that has a bunch of additional chaos stuff, and there's a bunch of additional characters that I haven't actually written down here. But yeah, I need to paint it up because the only one I've really been using so far has been Drake Drek, who is a Crute sniper, who is super good in 40k, or he was last time I played. Uh, but yeah, let's see Imperial Fest. Then we're going to get onto the ones that I've actually been doing a lot on. So Orcs. These are my evil sons. I inherited most of this from my brother. Because... Basically, he started 4th edition, I think it was, Assault on Blackreach. And... Yeah, Assault, Assault on Blackreach, everyone wanted to be the Marines. So my brother just got all the Orcs for cheap. So I have... What, 73 Orc boys that are all... Um, like almost all of them assault on black creature ones. I think I've got like six death copters, which again are the plastic assault on black reach and the war bikers and other. so I've got loads of stuff that is just assault on black creature models that I'm basically repainting. Got a few other bits and pieces that I've picked up in terms of all the vehicles and stuff, but those are just going to add. Oh yeah, or orcs are for people who like collecting D6s. Like I think a squad of let's see, a squad of 30 boys, if you get them charged into combat with Slugger and Chopper, that is what, 90 attacks? And you can do things that give them extra like sixes give them extra attacks to roll as well so if you get them into close combat they are going to murder stuff then we get a thousand sons yeah 90 dice because uh they get two attacks each i believe and then if the chopper and slugger that gives them plus one attack so three attacks a piece. So squad of 30, if you manage to get them in, that's uh, 90 dice to hit. But yeah, Thousand Suns are mostly done. I've got Mutual Vortex Beast that I need to finish off. Some Zangos. Zangos are quite possibly my most hated model in the whole of 40k. Suddenly got a lot better with contrast paints, but we out before contrast paints, I hated painting them. The mold is that they have for them, GW, is all broken. So the actual sculpts are all warped and everything, despite this being a new kit. So yeah. And I got some exalted sorcerers. I think there may be some more thousand some stuff that has come out or is coming out at some point but yeah the the annoying thing with zangos is you may think oh you can forget them but zangos are so good in game they're such good troops choice especially with certain shenanigans you can play i have magnus who is technically built and base coated Just not fully painted. So yeah, they're mostly done. White scars, eh. I may finish off my white scars. The Raven Guard are mostly done, but I may end up getting rid of them. White scars I may keep just for painting purposes, but Marines I'm sort of going off. I've been trying to keep to like a four army rule, and I've got, I mean, Thousand Sons, how many points have I got? About 3,000 points of Thousand Sons. 
White scars, that value's wrong because I don't have any points value for there. So probably about two and a half thousand points of white scars, another two thousand points of Demigod. So that's probably about five thousand points, six thousand points of Space Marines, ignoring the three thousand points of 30k Space Marines. Then we get to answering the question that Snowtwig that you asked. Are dwarves going to be my main army? Fourteen thousand five hundred points of tau. I have a lot of tau. <laughs> Some may say a problematic amount of tau, uh, an amount of tau that no player ever truly needs. But I have 21 crisis suits. Granted, a lot of those were bought cheap, like secondhand off eBay and stuff. I have 69 fire warriors. Uh, I technically have more crew now than just 24. Yes, 21 crisis suits. It may actually be more. I, I probably need to go through and count stuff up. I have 21 pathfinders. That definitely needs to go up because I've got more pathfinders since then. Uh, 30 gun drones, 16 mark drones, 17 shield drones. I have 8 hammerheads. Um, I've only got 3 riptides. But I do have... The Alvana Riptide and the Avara Riptides are technically five Riptides. But then where most of the points start coming in is that I have like a Tiger Shark, I have an Orca. I mean, 1,500 points is just my town art, so. Have I played with all of them? No, not all 14. Because a lot of these are not like necessarily built to paint. Like the heavy gun drones, a lot of the four drone stuff I bought when four drones were stopping doing them. And I just bought them in bulk so that I would have them to build someday. I think the most of my tower I've played with, like I think the biggest tower army I've fielded. I can't remember how big it was, but probably somewhere between like six and ten thousand points for a, a massive apocalypse game. I mean, I've definitely played a few five thousand point apocalypse, like big, big, all day games. But yes. This is my town. And I, I discovered today that um, I'm going to be buying more town Because Game Workshop uh, have been teaming up with someone to release a bunch of action figure sized uh, models. So, for example, Grey Knight's Terminators, 118th scale. A 118th scale Ultramarines captain. Our primary city eradicators. So, what the rumors are, this is going to be some tower ones. There's Commander Shadow Sun. There's some Fire Warriors. There's what looks to be potentially a crisis suit. And then. People aren't sure what this one is. It could be a Riptide, which would be massive. Uh, maybe a Ghost Keel. Maybe like a Commander suit, though it looks a bit big for a Commander suit. But yeah. Um, that's probably going to take up a lot of my money. Because... Like I say, Games Workshop just has to release something that has Tau in the name, and I buy it because Tau. 
The problem for me is, is that the leagues of Votan are probably going to end up being another one of those armies where GW just has to say the name and I throw my wallet at the screen. Oh, I meant to do that. What? Oh, that's down there. You know what? Um... Let's select that, 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 and that. Uh, Z is zero. Right, where are we? Here. That vertex. Roll that in. I don't need to just bring um. So I want that to go sort of down there, around, flatten off, curve around. Ideally, want it to come around a bit more. I think what I need to do with this is. Um, Shift it forward so that uh, this can shift forward. Then it'll go around and then it'll curve. Like that, and then it will go around, continue, and then start curving back. I think that should work. So let us. Move that up. And what I am going to do. Uh, we don't actually need that. Um, so I am going to... Uh, where, in fact, let's extend just up there, and then, um, uh, set origin. What? 
Okay, let's see if we can add a, a mirror. Yeah, so what I probably want to do, I'll do all of this. And have this as a center point and then I will mirror it. So mirror on the third. Uh, uh, that, that so origin, so that. Um, the origin. Cursor there and then urgent cursor. Hey, don't know why I need to do it that way, but right, let's add ourselves a mirror modifier again. I want to modify it so that it goes on the third axis. Right, um, Probably about halfway between. So we do it not 0.55. Okay. So now I can go up. And then E Z not point one five no probably not point two five. Okay. Now the fun begins.
let's uh, bring all this stuff back. So the real question is going to be get rid of that now. Let's save this and let's open up Unity and see what the size looks like. Oh no, that's the wrong project. Project that I want. We will see. Whether this is too small. Right, now somewhere I should have um Let's play this. Okay. I need to sort out the positioning. So let's um just shift that down there a sec. Alright, the most important one is this one. So um new focus cam.
Let's get this. Yeah. Hello, Brib Monster. How are you doing today? So that can go there, and I can there, and that is basically filling the screen there. So I'm still going to take a screenshot of the transform so that we can. Ah, now let's do that. And um, that up. So the screen focus count wants to be zero. Uh, minus 5.56, minus 0 0.4, minus 0 0.72. Okay. Do with doing is setting that to there, that to there, and that there, because then I can zero these out. Good to hear you're doing good, Brimons. I am doing pretty well myself. Just getting all of this functionality working. Um, so, uh, we want that. Now, I'm going to have to work out all the cameras separately anyway, but I just want to make sure that the existing cameras would work because what we're going to want is you walk in and there's going to be a camera sort of in the middle of the room that's going to be looking at you. And it's just going to rotate and follow around. And as I come down here, then it's going to sort of go from around here to about where I'm placing this camera. Because the screen won't actually be here until I want it to be here. So let's give this a go. actually that does give a pretty good view As I can, what would happen if um, Now I think what I'll 
do is the cameras should be looking straight ahead. Oh, we can have them tilt when... I rotate when I get a bit too far away. And we can also have the cameras sort of be on an upper level as I'm walking around and then I come over here and come down and it sort of follows me down. So yeah. I think having a single camera well, it would be a multi-camera setup, potentially. Because I'd have a camera here, and then I'd have a camera here. And what I'm wanting is something where I have a command that I can do that will actually move me to uh, the location that I need to be for presenting so I can have the correct thing and when I move to that location then the, when I like get there then I can have the camera go to the screen and when I pull away like if I move away from that location then the screen can pan back to the thing and then if I need to go back just press the button again so it's like a button that places me while also handles the screen. Because at the moment I just press triangle and it switches between. Because I can do that with multiple cameras. On the bridge I have that. Because if I show you, for example, um, if I unlock myself. So I can be here. Or I can have the camera here. But there is another camera, which is the one, if, for example, so what I could do is a similar thing where I have a special action for when I'm presenting, but then I have the two cameras set up. So I have a camera when I am, uh, a camera when I'm at the front, uh, So, uh, I mean, if I grab this, it would look probably. And we could hide the screen temporarily. It would probably be something like here, where I could walk across and it would follow me around. And then I would have uh the camera here when i'm down on the ground so it's like it's sort of moving here rotating and then it will just move back to here and then go up and down and rotate and so on so i think yeah because you can do quite a lot of stuff with cinema machine and if we do need to control a few things in code we can do but we could just have a bunch of virtual cameras so we can have this standard virtual camera where if you are in a certain area it does this virtual camera but if you go into another area it can switch to other virtual cameras here and then the triangle just switches to virtual cameras that i mean i'm only really set up for two virtual cameras but I mean, I've got the weights here, so I could set up a mix that follows. So that one is always... So that one would override. But if I'm in here, it should focus on this. I mean, let's give that a try. Uh, let's take everything that we have at the moment and just, um, no, I want Blender. Make sure that everything is saved and I'm just going to commit, uh, initial pass at, 
checking out. Okay. Well, let's just see what would happen if I duplicate that. I call this follow. Oh no, it actually wants to be the look at. So we want to look at LK bot. And we're going to set this to 10. Now I'm going to set it to 5. Let's see what this looks like. I can move into here. Does this, because uh, if I turn this on, right, uh, this actually wants to look at upper neck. Is that working that way? Well, if I was to disable that, disable that. Bridge cam, bridge cam. Yeah, it's looking at uh, Oh, that's looking at open neck. So if I do open that No, it's not Aha, aim. Is that... There we go. So, we to go along right. So, if I enable that and enable that... I'm going to come along here so it will follow me, but then... Right, so what I want to do is go about there, and then on follow... Uh, where is our... Head zone? I want to massively... Increase that. Um... As I want to be able to, then I go over to there and it takes over, and we're good. Go over to here, and 
that should yeah, it should be doable i may need to tweak some of the priorities so maybe when i'm over here the priorities are much higher when i get into this box in the center i base uh what i basically do is when i'm in the box in the center this priority goes to zero Or at least it goes to like 0.2. But yeah. The important thing is that the size looks good. So. Um, we can actually quit Unity. And we can, so, so first thing I noticed is this. Um, where are normal? Yes, yeah, some of the normals are, uh, correct. Normals need to be facing that way for Unity. So these probably want to all slide along so I can get a nice cut point there. Part of it does feel like that is going to be the bulk of the wing. It's going to scoop down a bit there and scoop up a bit there. That is going to continue back. So, uh, let's just save that and see. like that um ideally we want to straighten these up um that is not ideal
Yeah, that doesn't look good in the slightest. In which case, we need this to go back. Be able to delete that bottom bit off once we apply. Um, just want to make that curve out a bit more. Just in the middle. I think that is looking fairly reasonable so far. So there are going to be no windows along here, but along this and along the curve, there's going to be windows. This bit isn't because the curve is probably going to go around here and then just start going out so that it can taper out into a long spike for the engine. So what do we want? Um, I think what we probably want to do is link this wall up so that we have one continuous. Not sure. Let's create. Uh, a collection two. That so we're gonna drag that in. This is going to be the 
Uh, we can hide all that. Actually, one uh, conference floor. As you want to shift this along Y. To there. Okay, let's apply this. I think that looks pretty good. Now the question is, do I connect this wall up? as one big mesh do i just leave this and have it sit right it's probably going to be easier doing it as separate meshes so and we will just Drag that out. If there are going to be windows here, we may need to uh, tweak this somewhat. But for now, I think we're good. So, next thing is we don't actually care what the bottom bit here looks like so um, if we shift like that I think we're looking good there. Right. Let's get this uh, platform working. Wait, why is that still visible? Alright, um let's get the walkway in. Now the walkway is not gonna go all the way up to the edge. There's going to be a bit of a gap. What's going on there? Okay, as long as the top looks to me okay. Uh, oh, nice. What the hell has happened there? Got that alternate. Uh, so that.
Let's get rid of... Right, let's get rid of the ramp because that is going to change to stairs. So we don't need that. And that lets us go through and delete a bunch of... Let's see. Okay. So then we will bring this back. Um well, ideally what we want is Oh that just maybe I could bring it around to this line here. We could use most of that curve bring it round because I want this to come round to just curve round probably around here I mean what we could do because what I was thinking is you'd come in here and walk down what if you walk behind, walked around and down here? Because then you don't need a ramp down here. So this could just extend out. So you're coming from the bridge, you walk around, walk down. And you've got the stairs that come here. Because it makes sense that you would go around, down, and then you can continue down there. That could work. Well, looking at the time that is probably for another day so what i'm going to do is have a quick look uh, too many people online Yeah. Oh, wait. Where I think it is. No, it isn't. Oh, well. Right. Well, I think we'll just leave it there. Uh, so, I want to thank you all for stopping by. Um... It has been quite, uh, well, I not productive in terms of creating stuff, but productive in terms of figuring stuff out. Uh, I think it has been quite a good evening. Hopefully it has been uh, somewhat enjoyable for you as well. So, as always, I want to thank you all for coming. I will be back on Sunday. Uh, at 1 p.m. UK time, doing some more work on Coppice. Uh, hopefully, having got a fair bit of work done off stream on Coppice. Uh, but yes, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, evening, whatever time it is for you. A wonderful rest of your week. And as always, 
Happy coding. <laughs>